Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room. I'm Dave and on today's video I have this special, extra special pile of fabric right here. This was originally blue fabric. This fabric is hand dyed. Actually it's bleach tie dyed by me and my friend Austin and his wife Emma. They wanted to bleach tie dye garments and so and I wanted to do fabric and make a quilt out of it. So we did it and Quite frankly, it's actually the fabric pile has been sitting here for a while. Not exactly a UFO, I hadn't even started yet because I didn't know what to do with it. And I knew that I wanted to come up with some idea that would showcase the beautiful designs that we bleach tie dyed into the fabric, which meant I couldn't really cut it up too small because then you'd lose the beautiful designs. It sat under the table in a pile folded up like this for so long because I couldn't figure out what design I wanted to use it for. And I realized finally that the antidote is squares. Okay, we're just gonna cut it into squares and we're gonna sew the squares up. That's gonna be our quilt and the feature is really the tie dye and then I'm even gonna take it a step further and instead of quilted either by hand or machine I'm gonna tie the quilt. I just feel like that's the move and I've never tied a quilt before. There's nothing wrong with tying quilts. It's considered kind of like a, a beginner method. It's very utilitarian. I don't think there's anything wrong with it but I enjoy quilting a quilt. I enjoy hand quilting I'm getting better at machine quilting, so that's why I'm never really inclined to tie quilts. But many people tie quilts all the time. It's fast, especially if you're going to give the blanket to a child. There's no need to put all this stuff, you know, all the extra work into it just for them to drag it around. Might as well just tie it. That's not what this is for. I'm just, I just feel like it's the move. That's all. I think the thing to do is select out the favorites. Showcase them in big panels of it, whether it's a square or rectangle-ish, we'll see, but separate those out. Then there's also, most of these were fat quarters, some half yards, and then some were like this. Some were fully just scraps. I feel like this amount is probably more I'm gonna have extra. Once I've showcased the best of it, whatever I have with scraps, at that point, I'll feel totally liberated to use them however I want. At this point, I'm, I'm feeling a little confined by the nature of having made this by hand. So I, I just need to do it. I need to sew it. I want to sew it up. I want to tie it instead of quilt it. And uh, I'm not going to be concerned that it's not the most beautiful design per se in terms of the patchwork quilting. Okay, everything doesn't have to be on the next level. We can just do, like, I can just make a quilt. You know what I mean? I don't, <laughs> I just want to make a quilt. That's all. Now, when me and Austin were tie dyeing the stuff, I did film some clips. I didn't film the whole process because I really just didn't feel like filming. I wanted to spend time with my friend. I really didn't want to film it. Um, but I did film some clips. So I'm going to put the clips in. And then we're gonna come back and look at the fabric and actually see the results. And now, before I neutralize it, we unroll, unfold, and witness perfection incarnate. If I can get the fabric unrolled. <laughs> I, I like, like it. Little boxes. Maybe it's the wrong way up, hold on. Sideways. I like it. It kind of looks like a butterfly or something with the, the head, with the little antennas, you know? Yes. Or like a flower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see cactuses. I see that New Mexico symbol. Maybe it's the clouds. You can see anything you want in it. Okay, well. Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Kitchen. I'm here with Dave's Craft Austin. Hello. And his wife, Emma. <laughs> and what are we doing? We're making tie-dye for a quilt and also potentially ruining some jackets of ours. He's too chicken to do the jacket. We're doing all He's of, just the, doing all my of fabric. the quilt fabric first because the jacket is big and scary and I don't want to ruin it. Do it next. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it facing away like that. Do you know what you're doing? No. So... He's watching the video. So I'll go like right here and just start... Oh no, it's heavy. <laughs> start swirling, you know? 
I'm gonna speed this part up. <laughs> <laughs> in there stunning it matches your hair <laughs> make sure everything's squished and looking like a see. pizza yes what next next i'm gonna flip it over and hopefully it looks good here's our pizza pizza pie uh, oh. this is the front yeah we want to dye the front Trim. what's the move Dye the pizza I think slices. I'm gonna do really focused bleach in the center. And then we'll just kind of miss the whole thing. Kids. So it's right. turning brownish maroon. Yeah. <gasps> Look at it. It actually turned out. What did you think? Of course <laughs> it did. It's perfect. Stunning. Is this gonna overflow? Let's hope not. It'll be okay if it doesn't just wipe it up. You are getting peroxide everywhere all over peroxide the floor. Peroxide is safe. You put it on cuts and things. I heard you're not supposed like to do that. You ready? How does it look? It looks good. Stunning. See? Beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is. Simply perfect. This is a really gross water. Stunning. It is very gross. <laughs> Here we go. It's not going to get my... I feel like this is not the best way to do this. I like it different. The second is called Shibori, and it's usually the big mineral wash look. I don't. Hopefully this works. I don't think you have to keep it holding. I don't think you have to keep holding it on there. So do I have to hold it there? Show the footage. We're back. Now I'm gonna show this off. This is all the fabric that we bleached tie-dyed. We did all kinds of different techniques. Basically whatever we could think of or what was on the YouTube videos that we watched. That's Austin's hand prints. This one looks like a fidget spinner. We did some shibori techniques. This was actually using the bleach gel of the toilet bowl cleaner. And on this one, we put some painter's tape across it and sprayed it with bleach that was in a spray bottle. And then we did some Jackson Pollock again with the toilet bowl cleaner. Some of it, we just scrunched it up to make random designs. After we bleached the fabric and let it sit for like 10 minutes, we unwrapped the rubber bands and put it in a peroxide bath, which deactivates the bleach. And I'm going to leave a link below to some instructions on how to do bleach tie-dye. Now I've selected out the best ones and I'm cutting them into large squares that are about the size of a bandana. And I sew them up real quick and easy. I used 11 large squares and then because I wanted to put Austin's handprint in it, I pieced the 12th block. As I was making this first quilt, it became clear that I would need to sew up the remaining scraps into a second sibling quilt. So there's going to be two quilts in this video because I made them together. This first quilt is called Order. Now for the second quilt, I started this quilt working with uniform squares just to see how far I could get like that. And I could cover maybe a third of the ground I needed to. Then I started doing improv in the same technique I've used in the flannel quilt video and the denim quilt video. It's pretty simple. I sew two pieces together and then square that up. Then I sew that to a third piece or another piece of other pieces and I make neighborhoods. Then I sew the neighborhoods together. 
The second quilt is called Chaos. I realized as I was making these quilts that I wanted to give one of the sibling quilts to Emma for her birthday, which was approaching as I was making these quilts. I actually think this video is going to go up on Emma's birthday, so happy birthday to Emma. I thought she would like it because we dyed the fabric together and it has her husband Austin's handprint on it. I wanted to give her the better of the two quilts, so I planned to give her order because I thought order was better. but. When she saw the quilts, she liked chaos better. So I guess it works out because each of us gets to keep the one that we liked better. like eight to 10 inches.
For both of the quilts, I'm sewing the backing face down onto the front around the edges and then I turn it right side out. And now I'm ready to tie this quilt. It's pretty easy. I'm using embroidery floss. I know that most people use yarn, but I don't have any yarn. I have embroidery floss. At first, I tried to get the ties evenly spaced and in a perfect row, but then I remembered that this quilt is called Chaos. Why bother doing all that? So then I started putting them in random places. I also realized that I could continue sewing from knot to knot and then cut it later and tie the pieces later and that made it go faster. But speaking of faster, this tie job actually took a couple of hours. Like I actually think machine quilting would have been faster, but I am really liking the look of this tied quilt. I think it just works for chaos. I definitely needed to do this to get over thinking that there were some quilting methods that are better than others. It doesn't matter if you tie it or if you do free motion quilting or long arm or hand quilt. What matters is that the quilting works for the project and that you like it. So the ties worked for chaos, but I decided to do some big stitch hand quilting for order. I learned a very valuable lesson, even though I've learned this lesson before, but I tempted fate again. Whatever instructions are on your batting package as to how far apart you can quilt it, follow those instructions. It's on the packaging, it usually says like up to 8 inches apart or 6 inches or 10 inches, whatever it is. That is not a suggestion, it's a rule. I initially didn't quilt this enough or the, stil the stitching lines were too far apart and when I washed it, the batting shifted and it got lumpy. I fixed it by flattening it out and working the batting back to being as flat as possible and then I put some more quilting stitches in. But I'm definitely going to follow the instructions on the batting package from now on. So these are order and chaos. I absolutely love them. I am keeping order and I gave chaos to Emma. And now since Austin has the lava lamps and Emma has chaos, husband and wife each has a Dave's Craft Room original. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and please come again.